one of the greatest high school football programs in America, one that has supplied the NFL with an average of one prospect per year, does not have a booster club. There is no team bus or multi-million dollar stadium in which they play. There are no parents who volunteer their time for raffle drawings and car washes or to decorate the windows of Main Street on game days. There are no steak nights or bumper stickers and no water tower or welcome sign along the highway that boasts of their achievements. So I was a little surprised that on a sweltering football field in Tallahassee, Florida, where the temperature soared above 100 degrees, the Glades Central Raiders did not even have their own water. It was early August, and the Raiders had traveled six hours north to the campus of Florida State University for an off-season seven-on-seven tournament against some of the best high school teams in the South. The glorified touch football games, usually 20 minutes long and played without pads, were primarily a showcase for passing offenses, which were a specialty in a state that consistently produced speedy skill players. In recent years, they'd also become one of the chief exhibitions for college coaches and recruiters to eyeball the current crop of talent. For elite teams such as the Raiders, the invitations to such tournaments now filled the summer months. That afternoon, at Florida State, 12 games were scheduled in a round robin. During a lull between matches, the boys from Belglade appeared exhausted. At the motel the night before, most had stayed up until dawn playing video games. They'd overslept, missed breakfast, and forced the team to arrive late, barely escaping disqualification. They'd also arrived without enough uniforms, forcing players to strip off their sweat-soaked jerseys and share. Now, along the sidelines, they were wilted and starving. As other teams rested under giant tents bearing their school logos, enjoying sandwiches and cold Gatorade, about ten raiders squeezed under the skinny shadow of a light pole, the only shade they could find, and split a bag of M&Ms. For the Raiders, the tournament at FSU was only their second appearance since suffering a humiliating loss the previous season in the state 2A championship, a defeat that still hung like swamp gas over the glades. Worse, at the end of the school year, they'd graduated 22 seniors off the title-seeking roster and 28 the year before. For most teams, it would take years to recover a loss of that many starters. By all estimates, the Raiders entered Tallahassee a team looking for direction, testing whatever talents remained in hopes of a decent season. But, as the saying went in Belglade, the Raiders don't rebuild, they just reload. That afternoon, under a cloudless sky with the sun burning white hot, the arsenal was on full display. The Raiders had entered two teams in the tournament, one of starters and one of reserves. By the end of the afternoon, the two squads were undefeated and barely missed meeting each other in the championship round. As the Raiders' starting seven dominated Miami's Booker T. Washington High School, crowds of parents, coaches, and recruiters soon formed to watch the electrifying show and, in particular, a blue-chip wide receiver who'd arrived that morning, one of the most heavily recruited high school athletes in the nation. Reporters had nicknamed him Treetop, the recruiters who routinely crowded the Glade Central practice field had their own term. Kelvin Benjamin was a beautiful freak. KB, as he was known in Belglade, stood six foot six in bare feet and weighed 220 pounds. He was half Jamaican, and his mixed blood gave his skin a light, feverish complexion. He was broad chested and wrapped in muscle and carried a curvy, feline frame like a dancer. His face had the delicate bone structure of a woman's, so that whenever he pulled off his helmet and tied back his long braids, lips parting to reveal a mouthful of gold teeth, he evoked the picture of an androgynous warrior. The girls in Belglade called him pretty. The official team roster inflated Benjamin's size to six foot eight, which is basketball territory. At first glance at the numbers, many recruiting coaches pegged him as a tight end bulky enough to block and break tackles and snatch up short first down yardage. Hearing that he ran the 40 in 4.5 seconds put the glimmer in their eye, but it needed seeing to believe. Once they played the film or watched the snap from the perimeter, they beheld a rare kind of athlete, a dream-wide receiver that appeared only so often. 